Why does the ICC insist on continuing the Kenyan cases, even after the Kenyan people voted for two of the accused in presidential elections? Isn't that a violation of the country's sovereignty? No. The ICC's continued intervention is not a violation of Kenya's sovereignty. The two issues are completely unrelated. Every state that is part of the ICC, including Kenya, freely exercise its sovereign right to join. And the people of Kenya freely exercise their democratic right during the presidential elections. The ICC process is judicial, and it should not be politicized. The fact is, in the period of the post-election violence, more than a thousand people were killed, thousands were injured, and hundreds of thousands were forced to flee their homes. For the victims of this violence, and to protect future generations from the commission of such crimes, justice must be done. I would like to emphasize that the ICC is a court of last resort that only intervenes when national authorities are unable or unwilling to genuinely prosecute crimes within the ICC's jurisdiction. Let's not forget how the ICC process in Kenya came to be. The previous ICC prosecutor opened an investigation after having consulted with the Kenyan authorities and after it became clear that Kenya's parliament had failed to establish a special tribunal to address the post-election violence, which meant that no domestic judicial proceedings were going to take place in connection with these mass crimes. Thus, in the continuous absence of national justice, international justice had to intervene. This is the principle that Kenya itself had accepted when it made the sovereign decision to ratify the Rome Statute in 2005. The court offers the highest guarantees for fair proceedings and has no doubt that the accused themselves will continue cooperating with the ICC. They have acknowledged publicly on several occasions that they will do so in order to clear their names. Before the ICC, they are presumed innocent until proven otherwise. Hence, they will need to face the serious charges before the ICC judges and defend themselves in court in the just and in a fair trial. Will the withdrawal from the Rome Statute or a referendum on cooperation with the ICC terminate the cases? No, it would not. The ICC proceedings are judicial matters. It's not possible to stop independent judicial and legal proceedings via political measures. A referendum or a government's decision would not change Kenya's obligation under international law and in virtue of Kenya's sovereign ratification of the Rome Statute to fully cooperate with the ICC with respect to cases that have already been initiated. The ICC is intervening in Kenya in order to establish the truth of the events of the post-election violence. After a careful and thorough examination of the evidence that will be provided by the prosecutor and by the defense, Kenyan victims in particular and Kenyan society as a whole deserve to have a justice process that respects the highest standards acknowledge the rights of the victims and protects future generations. As with joining the Rome Statute, withdrawing from it is also a voluntary and a sovereign decision. If a country decides to withdraw from the statute, this action would only enter into force one year after the state has deposited its withdrawal notification with the United Nations Secretary General. As I said, a withdrawal does not affect in any way ongoing cases and proceedings. What it would affect is the future. Many commentators assessed that the threat of ICC prosecution was a significant factor contributing to the peaceful elections of 2013. If Kenya withdraws from the Rome Statute, that factor will no longer be there in the future. Reports indicate that more prosecution witnesses are withdrawing. Will that lead to the cases being dropped? The Kenyan cases are proceeding. The IC prosecutor has consistently indicated that she is ready to proceed with both Kenyan cases. In the case of Mr. Ruto and Mr. Sung, besides 40 witnesses, the prosecutor will also call uh, experts and present before the judges a large number of documents and audiovisual material as evidence. In case a witness decides to withdraw, it is possible for the prosecutor 
to apply to the chamber to add other witnesses. For example, on the 3rd of June 2013, the judges authorized the prosecutor to add two new witnesses to the case of Mr. Ruto and Mr. Sung. The speculation in the media concerning the supposed identity, movements, and whereabouts or status of witnesses is to be deplored. I would add that, unfortunately, these reports are not surprising. In other countries where the ICC is operating also, we can also see similar speculation in the media regarding the status of witnesses. Frequently, speculations of that sort includes false information and puts innocent people in danger. In addition to the persistent speculations about the identity and status of ICC witnesses, the scale of interference with witnesses in the Kenyan cases has been characterized by the IC prosecutor as unprecedented. The prosecutor has spoken out against persistent attempt to intimidate, harass, or otherwise influence witnesses. This is a serious matter for the court. The ability of all witnesses to appear before the court to tell the truth is essential to fair trials. So protection and support of witnesses is a high priority for the ICC. The court has in place a large number of measures to protect the well-being and safety of the witnesses. Whether they are witnesses for the defense or for the prosecution, these protective measures may range from closed sessions during the hearings in order to keep confidential the identity of the person to, as an extreme measure, a relocation of the witness to another country. It's also important to stress that interfering with a witness is a crime which can be prosecuted both under the ICC statute and under national Kenyan law. What would happen if Kenya decides not to cooperate with the ICC or if the accused do not appear before the judges for the opening of the trials? The Kenyan authorities and the accused have continued to cooperate with the ICC and to respect their obligation under international law to comply with the court's decision and legal framework. We certainly hope that this cooperation will continue. In the hypothetical situation where national authorities of any state party would cease to cooperate with the court, the ICC judges can make a finding about this and inform the assembly of the state parties to their own statute. It will then be for the 122 states parties to decide on the most appropriate measures to ensure that this state respects its obligation under the Rome Statute. As for the Kenyan accused, they continue to be free persons as they have continued to comply by the judge's orders and conditions. They have only been summoned to appear on the dates of specified hearings and throughout the trials. If any of the Kenyan accused violate the conditions put on them by the IC judges or decide not to attend the hearings when requested, then the IC judges could decide to issue an arrest warrant against this accused. However, as I said, they have continued to cooperate with the ICC and we hope that they will continue to do that. We also note their own declarations where they stated that they are willing to continue the cooperation with the ICC as this is the only way to clear their names after fair proceedings from the serious charges that they are uh, uh, accused of.